Hello, Verbling. Good to see you all today. I am a, uh, an English teacher here on Verbling.com. My name is Narelle, and I hope that you will all join me for class this evening. As you can see, um, it's evening over here on my side of the world. Um, I am from New York City. I'm currently living in New York City, and I am a native English speaker from the United States. A little bit more about me, well, so. I spent the last 13 years living in Boulder, Colorado, which is a western city in the United States known for its mountains and its outdoor life and its holistic lifestyle and its wonderful arid climate. So that's a little bit about me. I've been teaching on Verbling for um, about a few weeks to a month now, so I'm still a little bit new at it, but I'm enjoying it so much, and I'm very excited about all the lessons that I have planned for the next few weeks, so feel free to check out um, lesson plans, and you can contact me on Verbling with any feedback that you might have if you're interested in any particular class, you know, you can even include that feedback in the chat box right here. I'm really eager to know what everyone wants to learn about in classes. And there are all kinds of things that, all kinds of activities that are very beneficial for growing one's confidence and fluency in English. We um, Some of the other classes that I offer are based in pronunciation, we can work on grammar, we can work on conversation. I like to do a lot of reading comprehension classes because they generally stimulate discussions that are wonderful for increasing confidence because confidence in speaking English is going to be one of the most important parts of your journey. I think that uh, anybody that embarks on learning a new language, both writing and speaking, is doing one of the, is, is committing one of the greatest acts of self-reflection and growth available here on Earth. Learning a new language is a really incredible thing to do because uh, not only is the intellectual mind stimulated, but the, uh, the emotions and the heart all come up onto the table as we learn together and come together as a global community, especially online. Um, I've learned some pretty fascinating things from my students that I would never have known otherwise um, had I not been a teacher here. So thank you every everyone so much for sharing your experiences growing up in growing up and living in your respective countries. It's all colored my world very much as I've embarked on this uh, journey teaching English. I'm also learning Korean too as we speak as I prepare to move to South Korea and so I can definitely relate to the uh, uh, the the uh, the other side of the spectrum, and that is that learning any new foreign language is definitely very overwhelming. All right, so that's a little bit of my plug. Um, thanks for coming. Um, thanks for listening to my introduction. I hope that you will all join me in class here in a minute. So I'm gonna pull up some of my teaching material here to start. Okay, so let me make that a little bigger. Mm, 150, okay. Hopefully that's big enough for everyone to see. And so I see that we've got some viewers here. Uh, you're all welcome to participate in the chat box. Um, if there are a lot of students uh, that are participating verbally. Sometimes it can be hard for me to 
keep up with the chat box, so I apologize ahead of time for that, but it's uh, still I'm glad to have chat because it's a great tool for, um, it's like a whiteboard, it's a great tool for learning for sure. So let me start with the class goals here. So the title of this class is, There's More to Animal Communication Than Meets the Ear. This is a reading comprehension class for uh, advanced to intermediate students. And up oh, looks like we've got somebody here named Tony. He's uh, posing by a Christmas tree here. That's a pretty cool picture, Tony. How are you today? Uh, I am doing great. And you? I'm good, thank you. Where is this picture taken, out of curiosity? <laughs> uh, this picture was taken uh, in United States near Washington DC. Oh, cool. Yes, I was going to ask if it was uh, a Christmas tree in the United States because everything in the United States is huge and flamboyant and the Christmas yes. trees are always enormous and so it lo it reminded me of some of the um, the showiness that I'm accustomed to seeing in my country. <laughs> what, <laughs> what about you? Are Christmas trees like that over where you're from? Yeah, uh, our Christmas tree is often uh, smaller, smaller than our height. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Where are you from? What country? Uh, I am from Japan. Japan. Oh, I see. Everything is tiny and cute in Japan. <laughs> yes. I've been to uh, the the airport near Tokyo, and that's what I noticed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, Tony. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you. Yes. All right. Hi, David. How are you? Good to see you again. Hi, teacher. I'm fine. Thanks. Wow. You? Yes, good. Tell me, just remind me again where you're from, David. Brazil. Brazil. Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> yes, I, I apologize. I've seen a lot of people no today. And so I must uh, do better at remembering. Well, thank you for coming. Did you have a good day, David? Yes, I did. Awesome. Awesome. Good. Okay, so let's head back over to my little sheet here. And I hope that that's big enough for everybody to see. I'm going to make it bigger even. Okay, it's there okay. we go. All right, so the class goals are pretty straightforward, but I'm going to have Tony read them anyway. Tony, could you read the class goals, please? <laughs> Okay, uh, class goals, improve reading comprehension skills, discuss cultural views of animals and student individual beliefs about language as it relates to non-humans. Awesome, thank you. So I got a kick out of this article because I've always known that animals have their own language and it's not just people that talk. I got a kick out of it because it's kind of talking about language only. These languages are, uh, you know, foot stomping is their language, is the way they express their language, some animals, whereas humans use their mouths and their tongues. And so um, wanted to ask you all, Tony, what, uh, what do you, what are, what is, what is it? Is it common in Japan to consider animals uh, speaking beings? Oh uh, yeah. Um. Somehow I happened to watch a news and it said that the some uh, uh, expert uh, found out the evidence that uh, um, there uh, there. Uh, or is possibility to communicate with dolphins? Yes. And and uh, uh, he already uh, shown how to communicate, and he said that uh, he was succeed succeeded to communicate with dolphin. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's, yeah. Very. I, and I I think this news is somehow related to your <laughs> uh, class. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, it came up. Yeah. Yes, very cool. Thank you for sharing. And David, what about you? Uh, what are what cultural beliefs does Brazil have about 
animals and language? Well, I think you can find everything in Brazil. <laughs> Explain that. What does that mean? Well, in particular, I don't believe that animals can speak. I think they understand some commands. Mm -hmm. They are able to learn some expressions. Mm -hmm. And you need to communicate with them with body language. Mm -hmm. but for example, my sister-in-law, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago, she talked with plants. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, tell me about that. What did the plants say? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> You know, when I was young, my science experiment was, um, will plants grow bigger and better if I talk to them? And the uh, my conclusion, or my hypothesis, my hypothesis was that, yes, a plant will grow bigger and more powerful. The plant will grow faster if you talk to it, but the, uh, the scientific reason was that if you're talking, you're expelling carbon dioxide with your breath, and so plants need carbon dioxide, and so that's why the plant grew bigger. So yeah. you know, I think, I think it's, uh, every, it's a little bit of everything, though. Yes, yes. Cool. Well, thank you for sharing. Uh, do, do either of you have anything to add about your uh, individual beliefs or uh, your culture's views on animal languages? Uh, I, I was startled a uh, book. I, I, what, I, I read uh, a book that said that, that even fish even fish have emotion. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm sure, yeah, I'm not sure it's true or not, but uh, since then, uh, ever since I've read about it, then I came to be hesitate to eat fish. <laughs> oh, rethinking eating fish, yes. Fish is, fish is big in Japan. You all have that ocean full of fish around. It must be... Uh, yeah, very popular it, seafood. Yeah, very sushi. common, common lunch. Uh, we, yeah, often eat. Ah, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. All right, let's get started with the article here. So let's see. Um, it's called "There's More to Animal Communication Than Meets the Ear." I'm just gonna scroll up. All right, so I'm gonna have Tony uh read this first paragraph here. Alright, Tony, there you go. Can you read that, please? Oh, okay. Mm. You can Claw. start here. Okay. Claw Wells with uh -huh. accent. Uh, par uh, par I don't know. Par prairie. I prairie dogs. Pa prairie? Prairie dogs. Fairy dogs with vocabularies. September 11, 1997. Web posted at 11:23 p.m. EDT. It's okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Let's skip. Okay. From correspondent Rusty Dorney. Yep. Dorney. Dorney. San Francisco CNN. It is commonly thought that animal communication is confined to a few fundamental sounds, such as a men menacing, menacing, burk, menacing, 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 uh -huh. menacing burk, a few warning chirps, or the bar of a lost cub. But researchers say that the way animals communicate may be more elaborate and sophisticated than it appears. Sophisticated than it appears. Kangaroo rats, for example, communicate by uh, stamp, stamping their feet, recording of their syncopated tone. Syncopated. Syncopated toe tapping suggests to researcher Jane Landau that there is 
more there than just her con congenital congenital the congenital. Like, <laughs> congenital sense of rhythm. It doesn't have pitch, Randall Randall said, but the animal can modify it so it's different. So it has the component of a language. Researchers have distinguished when a rat is drum, drumming for territory, drumming for mate, or drumming to warn, warn off its worst enemy, the snake. What the rat is saying it, when it drums a lot is, I'm a lot, I see you, go away. By your acoustical engineer. Acoustical. Acoustical. <laughs> Acoustical. Acoustical. Engineer Bernie Klaus has gone from the equator to the Arctic Circle. Eavesdropping? Eavesdropping. Eavesdropping. Eavesdropping on the animal kingdom. He believes animal communication is quite complex. I see evidence of creatures having exchanges between one another, behavior that kind of relates to vocal communication that as as astounding 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 as astounding great great well read great thank you Tony yeah, so thank you. <laughs> Yes, let's go over some of that vocabulary together. So, let's see. Um, David, can you describe what fundamental means? Fundamental means basics. Yes, basics. Excellent. But I don't know what means prairie dog. Oh, prairie dog. Yeah. Prairie dogs. Prairie dogs. Uh, I'm not sure if you have them in your country. There are a lot in the arid region of the United States. Prairie dogs are like rodents. They have, they are kind of like, they look like beavers or woodchucks, a little bit smaller, and they have a very, very complex tunneling system. Like in Colorado, in the United States where I used to live, we'd be driving along the highway and there'd be like, hundreds of prairie dogs that would be popping up and down a lot like next to the highway. I think they're like arid rodent animals, but they are uh, their social systems are said to be very complex. They are dogs that Oh, they're don't actually have not dogs. They're actually not dogs. The funny part is, you know, I'm going to actually Pull Google up here and see if we can't not get a picture of them here. It's an animal. Yeah. Let's just look at pictures of prairie dogs. There we go. Can you see? Okay, yeah. I they see. Look, they look like squirrels. Yeah. All right. It's so. like a squirrel. Yeah, like a burrowing squirrel. Exactly. Burrowing. Okay. Exactly. Okay, so uh, David, menacing, what does that mean? I don't know. Tony, do you know what menacing means? I don't know what it is meaning. Okay, so menacing is threatening. So, like, if you look menacing, you look like you could attack somebody at any moment. Okay. Yes. Uh, can you use menacing in a sentence? It's an adjective, Tony. Mm, menacing are behavior. <laughs> yes, menacing behavior is, um, yes, use that in a sentence. Okay. This dog uh, seems to have menacing behavior at okay. that moment. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the dog seems to, uh, saw a dog, let's see, to have menacing be, let's see, the dog seems, I think that makes sense, yeah, the dog seems to be, it would be more like be, the dog's, the dog's behavior is menacing, 
at this moment. So that means, so what does that mean? In other words, what does that mean? Another word? Yes, so the dog's behavior is menacing at this moment means that the dog is acting kind of scary. Yeah, yeah. The dog is threatening. Yes. Uh, and the uh, other expression of this sentence is the, the dog is... Uh, um, the dog's behavior is uh, uh, threatening. Is threatening. Yeah, th uh, threatening people. Yes, the dog's behavior is threatening, and threatening is uh, the verb in this case. The dog's behavior is threatening people. Yes, that is true. Great. Mm. David, can you use menacing in a sentence? Okay. Mm. Today, there are many types of games with menacing zombies. Yes, very great. Lots of like violent video games, yes. Today, there are many types of games with menacing zombies. Yes, excellent. Excellent. Okay, so next word. David, can you tell me what elaborate means? Elaborate means something improved. Yes, yes, excellent, yes. Something new and improved, fancy. Yes. Yes. Can you use the word elaborate in a sentence? Okay. Mm. When... I when I back home last week my mother did an elaborate dinner. Okay, so a couple of things I want to change about that. When I mm, back home, fill in the blank. When I mm, back home. Okay. What word? When I back home when I blank back home. When I came back home, go yeah. back home. Okay, yes. So when I came back home last week, you can say when I came back home last week, my mother, what an elaborate dinner. My mother, mm, my an mother elaborate dinner. Made or yes. did? Yes, my mother made an made. elaborate dinner. You can say my mother cooked an elaborate dinner. My mother made an elaborate dinner. My mother prepared an elaborate dinner. Okay. Yes, excellent. And what is chirps? A few warning chirps. Chirps. So chirps are like bird calls, like... Okay, okay. The words that were the sounds that birds make. Yes. Okay. All right, Tony, can you use the word elaborate in a sentence, please? Okay. Uh, after this class, I will elaborate on the subject more. After this class, I will elaborate, elaborate on on the subject. Great! That's a great yeah. sentence. After this class, I will elaborate on the subject. So what does that mean? What are you saying? Uh, yeah, uh, since I've already took this class and I'm uh, interested, being interested in, so the reason why I, I uh, will search out uh, some topics that is regarding to animal communication. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Glad to hear it. I'm mm. glad to hear that it's interesting to you. Yeah. Thank All you. All right. So, so let me see. Syncopated. 
Syncopated. Tony, can you tell me what syncopated means? Oh, syncopated. I don't know. <laughs> David, do you know what syncopated means? Mm. I don't know. So syncopated means uh, happening at the same time. Syncopated toe tapping means that they're all toe tapping at the same time, like they're all uh, same beat, same rhythm, like uh, the instruments, uh, the symphony was very syncopated, meaning that everyone was playing instruments together. So, um, Tony, can you make a... What is toe tapping? Say that again, David? What is toe tapping? Oh, toe tapping, toe tapping, toe -tapping. that is... When you tap your toes. Like this? What? Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes. Um, you're snapping your fingers. Yes, toe tapping is the same thing. It's kind of like what people do to the music. You snap your fingers and you tap your toes. You chicken your neck. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. like, uh, like dancing while you're sitting for people. Okay. Yes. So yes. So toe tapping. They're uh, by using toe tapping here. They're saying that kangaroos um, communicate with each other by stamping their feet. Like the way they stamp their feet has carries different messages. Like like if they were stamping their feet and they go, you know, like imagine this was stamping their feet. They go. What is a stamp? Oh, stamping their feet. That means uh stomping their feet, like you pick up your feet and you put them down. In the ground? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, it's... Uh, they hit their feet in the ground. Hitting their feet on the ground, yes. Stamping okay. their feet, uh, hitting the ground with their feet. A lot of the times uh, with people, uh, a lot of people can say, the toddler stamped her feet in tantrum, like stamping your feet, that's like what kids do when they're really angry. It can be an expression of anger for people, too. Okay. But here it's just, um, they're describing uh, a physical, the physical way that the body language, what kangaroos do to communicate. So stamping the feet and syncopated toe tapping is all body language. Okay. All right, so uh, Tony, I'm gonna have you uh, choose either syncopated or stamping to put in a sentence. Okay, I will use both. All right, <laughs> I will <Good>. try. <laughs> yeah, the uh, a young child kept uh, syncopating with using his chopsticks on the. Uh, elaborate dish that his mother made, oh. and, with, and uh, he also uh, um, also kept uh, stamping his feet. So that is why he was called by oh. her, his mother. <laughs> oh, so he stamped his feet to express that he was cold. Uh, yeah, he. Uh, uh, stamp, yeah, stamp, stamped, stamping. Stamp, stamping. So yeah. you could say uh, he stamped his. Sorry, chat is running a little bit slow. He stamped his feet. To and yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, he, that's the reason why he was scolded. Yes, he was scolded. Oh, he was scolded. <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, scolded. 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 Sorry, not cold. Yeah. Scold. So, so his mother scolded. So a child's mother scolded him. A child's mother scolded him, and he stamped his feet in anger. He was feeling. He was angry that at being scolded, and so he stamped his feet. Yeah. And he also said, so this is a very complex sentence or paragraph. You're describing um, lots of movement here. So uh, the child um, syncopated 
is chopsticks. Let's see. Yes. Let's see. Syncope. You know, I'm going to look up syncope. I just want to make sure. I've never used it as a verb. Syncope. Syncope. Let's all look it up together. Syncope. Definition. Can everyone see that? Yes. To, uh, so, verb, to place the accents on beats that are normally unaccented. To treat a passage piece this way. Okay, so that means that, oh, that's a little bit, wait a second. To modify or treat a beat or rhythm by syncopation. Syncopate. To place the accents on beats that are normally on accented. Huh, that's that's a pretty complicated definition. Do, do you understand that? Yeah. <laughs> sort of, right? I've always used syncopated to mean like uh, to to um, to move in a certain rhythm. So yes, the child syncopated his chopsticks in um, in in anticipation of his mother, of his mother's prepared dinner. Yes, that makes sense. Yes, the child syncopated his chopsticks, so he was like tapping his chopsticks, like in a rhythm, before eating. Is that right? Yes, that's what I wanted to say. Awesome, great. Yes. That's very creative. Very creative. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, David. Uh, what is like chopsticks? Chopsticks? Chopsticks. Uh, yeah. Oh, Tony, can you explain chopsticks for David? Uh, yeah, chopstick is uh, something that uh, we use, especially maybe Japanese, uh, at the uh, okay. moment to, to eat something. Okay. Kind of pair, okay. pair, pair yeah, of, I know, I know. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, they look like sticks, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, great. All right, David, would you like to use either syncopated or stamping in a sentence? Okay. Mm. When I heard, when I listen uh, good music, mm -hmm. I syncopate my... Fit. I think I hit. I hit my when I listen to good music. I hit my feet. Yes. 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 Think a bit my feet. Okay. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah. So you're tapping your feet. So you're moving your feet in time to the music. Okay. Yes, so a um, uh, small adjustment to that sentence. When I listen, mm, good music, I syncopate my feet. So what? Uh, uh, can you fill in that blank? When I listen, a good music. I listen to good music. To good music. Yes, yes, yes. Well done. Thank you. Okay, so components. David, what are components? Components are piece of something. Yes, 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 yes. Components are pieces. Yes, can you use components in a sentence? Yes. Mm. Uh, my no. Oh, the astronauts need to go out of the space station to fix some components. Yes. To fix some components. The astronauts need to go out. Um, slight, slight change here. So let me just type that in. The astronauts need to go out. 
Mm, of the... Close, not of. Not of. Close. Close. From? Uh, so are they going... Are they going... Where are they going? Are they leaving the space station, or are they going toward it? To? Yay! To, yes. <laughs> to the space station. Yes, excellent. Excellent. Well done. Okay, Tony, can you use components in a sentence, please? Uh, um, I've already ordered uh, some component of my PC. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So I'm not going to chat that because that's, the chat is running slow. You said, I've already ordered some components for my PC, right? Yes. Good job. Right. Perfect. Thank Perfect. You. Okay. So one more and then we'll move on here. Distinguished. What does distinguished mean, Tony? Uh, distinguished. Oh, sorry, I got. Oh, oh that's okay. Sorry, sorry, I got them. Uh, uh, yeah. Distinguished means the, the, to differ, differentiate. Yes. Good. Good synonym. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Can you use, use distinguished in a sentence? Yeah, um, I, a researcher have distinguished uh, the difference between them. <laughs> okay, great, great, great. So, uh, are you, did you, so you said a researcher have distinguished, so do you want to say... Has? Uh, has, has, yes. A yeah, researcher has. has distinguished. Great correction. Great self-correction. Thank you. Uh, David, distinguished. Okay. Mm. Can it be adjective? Oh, uh, an adjective? Yes. Distinguished has kind of a different meaning uh, when uh, it's an adjective. So distinguished as an adjective means like um, refined, gentlemanly, ladylike, distinguished, professional. Mm, okay. So, um, uh, this is a, I bought a distinguished computer. Oh, okay, okay. Um, that, that is grammatically correct. Um, usually, though, distinguished when uh, used as an adjective is usually descriptive of a person or a living being. So okay. usually you would use distinguished to describe like a man or a woman. Uh, okay, so mm, I have, I had a distinguished girlfriend. Yeah. Years ago. All right, great, great. So she was classy. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to move on to the next part of the article, and I am going to have David read this section. Okay. Killer whales with accents. Crow says killer whales have detailed chats when on the attack and that the accent of one pod might be different from that of others. There might be groups in the area that have the same language and articulation, Kraus said, but each pod or group of animals
but each part or group of animals has its own vocal accent which is unique to the part. Ornithologist uh. <laughs> Luis Bat Bat Batista says sparrows sign different I can see the text. Um, hold on one second. So, um, he says birds can also give more than one danger call. Yes. Oh, different, says, oh different dialects. Yes. Dialects. Luis Batista says sparrows sing different dialects in each region. He says birds can also give more than one danger call. A little one means watch it. Teacher, I can't see. I'm oh, sorry about that. Uh, sorry, I'm just like looking up words here. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> a little a little one means watch it, Batista, Batista, Batista said. But if it's very serious, they say very, very careful. And some birds have a danger sign that says a hawk is overhead. So some birds have danger signals for above or on the ground. Another research says that prayer dogs bark differently depending on the predator. There's one bark of for coyotes, or one for hawks, and one for humans. The researcher claims that there is even one for a human carrying a gun. Some scientists some science, scientists scoff at such interpretations and say animals are capable of only simplest alert calls. But a growing number agree that talk among us, the animals is anything but do. Oh, so David, did any of that surprise you? Mm. I don't know because when I'm reading, I <laughs> didn't understand very well. And uh, we'll come back to you. I know I usually try to uh, switch students when My after they read. My mind is slowly. Yes, we'll come back to you in one minute. So, okay. Tony, so okay. Tony, can can you summarize what was said? Uh, there are several animals that is capable of. Uh, a lot uh, uh, to uh, mm, to save uh, their company, their uh, I can say their uh, <laughs> friends, not friends, mm -hmm. same animals, same creatures, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, using their voice and uh, it's have particular dialects. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it's interesting, yeah. Ah, okay, awesome, awesome. So, David, do you have anything to add? What? Do you have anything to add to what Tony said about this paragraph? No. All right. So let's go over the vocabulary here then. Um. So. Dialects. Tony, do you know what dialects are? Uh, dialects uh, is uh, kind of uh, the way people say, uh, uh, and uh, even in the uh, same country, uh, it totally depends on uh, where they grew up. So they uh, affected with surrounding, uh, affected the way. Uh, 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 parents, parents mm -hmm. uh, speak. Yes. Or, or something. Yes. Yeah. So in Japan, are there different dialects of Japanese? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, there are a lot of differences. And <laughs> yes. yes. Can you understand all of the dialects? Uh, sometimes really difficult. <laughs> yes, I see. I see. Yeah. So uh, I am Chinese and. God, 
Chinese dialects. Well, I don't understand any of them at this point, but I tried to go to school for like three different dialects, two different dialects, and it was very difficult because they all sound different. David, are there different dialects of your language? No, no. Portuguese is the same. Oh, that's good. Cool. And it's very similar of the Portuguese in that is spoken in Portugal. Oh, that's probably mm, convenient for everybody. They have just different accents. Yes, different. So slightly different accents. Yes. So people in uh, the north side of Brazil and the south side of Brazil will sound a little bit different, but they'll still understand each other? Yes, yes. Gotcha. Okay. Awesome. So do you, is it funny that, or uh, unbelievable that all of these animals have different dialects? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Teacher, what is pod? A pod. Okay, so a pod. That is a family of whales. A family of whales. Um, okay. Or a family of whales or dolphins. There are many meanings of pod but that's what it is right now in this use. Like a pod, you can also say, uh, one, uh, an English expression is two, two peas in a pod. Another meaning of pod is like, uh, it literally peas, you know, peas, the vegetable. Uh, mm -hmm. The peas actually mm -hmm. come in a pod. The pod is like what the a vegetable comes in when it, it grows, and so two peas in a pod means like that the friends are really close. They're like best friends. And yeah. why that device is called iPod? <laughs> Say that again. iPod. A pod. There is an electronic device. Called oh, iPod. iPod. You know, yeah. I think that the word iPod. I think it comes from like a pod meaning like very succinct, very clean, very put together. A pod, like pods can also be used. It's kind of a technological term to mean this station. This station, this small group, it's very clean cut, very put together. Let's look up all the many meanings of pods and see which meaning we're talking about there. Like a vessel. Like a pod is a, a vessel. Okay. So I think that that's what they mean when... I think that's what iPod. A protective compartment. A protective compartment, yeah. Streamlined enclosure, housing, or detachable container. So yes, Mac is very... or Apple is very much about streamlined. And so that's probably why they named their product iPod. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Articulation. David, what is articulation? Mm, articulation. I think... I think it, it means in this phrase the movement of the the mouth to uh -huh. yes. to produce sounds. Yes, good, good. So articulate, yes, it's to uh, uh, the quality of the sound, the quality of the pronunciation. So to articulate something well is to speak something well, to state something well, to say something well. Okay. Like the uh, adjective would be articulate. So she is very articulate. She speaks very well. Okay. Great. So Tony, can you come up with a sentence uh, with the word articulate or articulation? Yeah. Uh, articulation is also have another meaning that is used in... Uh, medical field. Yes. It's a uh, a joint uh -huh. uh, between muscles. Yes. Yes. 
uh, for example, knees and or elbow or something like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great point. Yes, yeah, so are you uh, in the medical field, Tony? Yeah, uh, yeah. yes. I work for a hospital, so... <laughs> oh, oh, I see. What do you do? Uh, I'm um, taking care of kind of elderly person, like around 70 years old, oh. Alzheimer's disease, demented person. <laughs> oh! I, uh, yeah, I am a male nurse, by the way. Oh, oh yeah. a male nurse. Ah, ah, so you indicated a male nurse. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole culture around male nurses. Have you ever seen uh, the movie Meet the Fockers? Meet the Parents. There, uh, mm -hmm. there are two movies, two American movies that oh, they're right. just they're just funny because the joke is that he's a male nurse. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I have never heard about this joke, but <laughs> I don't know. He, um, I, I, it's I'm not gonna go into it now. I don't know. I just remember that movie was about. They're like, oh, a male nurse. <laughs> What is a male nurse? Um, so I think uh, I think David that sometimes um, they say I'm a, a male nurse because the nurse profession is usually so female dominate dominated. Okay, is a is a is a man that work? Yes, it uh um like a. Uh, assistant to the doctor. Okay. Is okay. that right, Tony? Can you explain what you do for nurse? Nurse is a is a noun that describes just women. Is not describing men. Usually, everyone assumes that it's a woman. That's just a cultural uh, it's, thing. It's ca commonly when, used. When a man works in the same job as a nurse. How you maybe uh, the concept of nurse is totally depend on the uh, uh, countries and uh, around ten countries in there uh, the uh, number of male nurses are more higher than that of females. So really, uh, yeah, it's, huh. it's true. Yeah, it's true. So oh. it's no, it's not so you know, yeah. Weird. Oh, yeah. th oh, that's so interesting. No, oh, it's and, uh, not weird. In Brazil, there is a uh, main man who works in this job too. Oh, yeah. I in our, see. Especially I, in I our, don't know the name. Could you type the name? Uh, the name of what? Male. I don't know. Male. 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 male nurse. Okay. Ah, okay. Male nurse. Oh, I understand now. Yes, yes. Yeah, oh, I guess then uh, the movies I was talking about might not make so much sense in, in Japan. <laughs> yeah. I and the, the, uh, you know, the number of male Nazis are getting increased nowadays. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see, I see. Mm -hmm. Yes, same with, um, same with, uh, like, I used to be a massage therapist, and... The, the uh, number of male massage therapists are, is increasing as well. Yeah, in Brazil there are many male nurses. Mm, yes, yes. It's common here. Yes, and the number of female doctors is increasing in, in the United States also. I think eventually everything will be 50-50. Yeah, hopefully. We hope, <laughs> yes, we hope, yeah. yes. Mm. All right, so let's see. Um, Ro vocabulary wise, does anybody have any specific questions about vocabulary? Sure, ornithologist. <laughs> it's a ornithologist. Yeah. Ornithologist is a specialist. Um, okay. I would assume that the uh, an, ortho an ornithologist says sparrows sing different dialects in each region. So it sounds like an ornithologist is somebody that studies animal behavior. I'm going to look it up just to check. A branch of zoology that deals with birds. So it's a person that it's a scientist that deals with that studies bird behavior. And how do you pronounce Baptista? 
but I would say I think you're saying it right. Either Baptista, Baptista. or Batista. Batista, Batista or Baptista. Okay. Probably Batista. Probably a silent P. Okay. Yes. All right. So that concludes the uh, discussion of our article. Thank you very much for coming, all of you. Any any closing statements? Any closing words? Any questions? No. No. Uh, it was very interesting. Good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Here, I'm. I'll post. Let me post the. Uh, Link to the article if you are interested. It is uh, CNN, and here's the link right there. So just want to plug in here that I'm available for private tutoring sessions. If any of uh, if anyone is interested, I'm doing a temporary discount right now, just twenty two dollars for one session or nineteen for, uh, per class for a package of five or ten. Uh, feel free to to uh, like me or follow me on Verblink to get updates on all of my future classes. And feel free to uh, message me if you have any feedback, if you have any special requests for classes in the future. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Thank you very much, David. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tony. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.